There's a comfort in the consistency yes. of the liturgy. And in the ancient church forever, we've had liturgies. And in, in, in a generation that's a, a bit younger than us, there is a love that is growing again for liturgy, you know, mm -hmm. because it gives us that comfort and consistency. I'm working through the Bible. I'm doing a chronological Bible reading plan for the first time ever this oh, year. Wow. So it's like a invite into my own personal um, kind of reading deal with Jesus. Uh, and, I, and I'm and i hitting Leviticus, which is like dreaded for every Bible reader. I joked, I think uh, Leviticus is the biblical graveyard for Bible in a year readers. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just like that's it's like place. February for working out. <laughs> but when you're talking, what I think about Leviticus is mm. actually a liturgy that God in his kindness knew that his people were about to face in all these different circumstances, intrusive thoughts, emotions, dysfunctional relationships. And he was like, hey, here is a consistent, consistent pattern of behavior, of actions that you can participate in that will always remind you of the beauty of God's covenant in people and the beauty of who I am so that when you're in those situations, you can be drawn back to me. And it's like routine, like festivals, right? Like at this time of year, every year you do this. Or if this situation happens, well, here's what the response is. So you're not left wondering like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? You just know, oh, here is a liturgy, here is a routine, and there's comfort in that consistency. I love that. You know, Jim, one of the things that you've taught me is prepare in times of strength for times of struggle. Mm -hmm. And I think about that quote a mm -hmm. lot. And so for me, they, I have kind of a plan when things hit me. And it's not so much like the bathroom incident that I described. It's more like I'll get some kind of bad news yeah. And it feels so all-consuming in that moment that the intrusive thoughts were, this is going to play out worst-case scenario because I've seen other things play out worst-case scenario. History. And, and so I'll take the bad news and I will run it so far down the field to where I'm planning funerals, I'm declaring bankruptcy, I am destitute, everyone in my life has left me, you know, and it's this... So the intrusive thoughts sometimes are just more catastrophic thinking as I play something all the way out. And so something that I know when that train starts happening and mm -hmm. I'm starting to spiral in my thoughts is I ask myself, but what is real right now? That's good. What mm -hmm. is real right now is I got some bad news. What mm -hmm. is real right now also is that I'm in a home. I am with people that I love. I am able to eat my next meal. I am able to go to my job. Like there are so many real good evidences of Christ's faithfulness that part of taking the thought captive for me is just that question. Mm. Okay, but what is real right now? Yeah. And then I'll go to tomorrow. And what is, what is real for tomorrow? And mm -hmm. I don't allow myself to go past that because sometimes worst case scenarios do happen. That's true. But a lot of times I need to change my thought, but what if it all works out okay? You know, there were things I was so completely stressed out about and having catastrophic thinking, worst case scenarios a year from now, that somehow over this past year, through counseling, through Bible reading, through letting life unfold, through God's protection, mm. that maybe I don't even see that it says protection, those worst case scenarios did not happen. And things did in some situations really work out okay. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, one of the biggest things is when I think about the protection of God sometimes, I think about him doing one big miraculous answer. Yeah, it's nice. But what I'm <laughs> learning is it's no less miraculous for God to just protect me today. That's right. For God to just provide for me today. And so when bad news comes or an intrusive thought comes or this catastrophic thinking is knocking at my door, keeping it very focused to what are the circumstances right in front of me. And Jesus even taught us this, like don't run ahead of the future. Like yes. tomorrow will have its trouble of its own. Like let's look at what's real right now mm -hmm. today. And that really helps me.